I'm Charlotte and this is Bookish Mama Blooms. I used to be Tired Mama Tries to Read, if you're confused as to why the name has changed. Um, yes, I am here to catch up. I am really behind. It's been, what are we now, February 27th, maybe more. Um, and I haven't done a single review video, so I've been reading for two months. I've had a really successful two months. So the last portion of 2020 was just a write-off. And then I've just found my feet again and I'm, I'm finishing a book, I'm more or less starting a book within the day or within 24 hours. And actually that brings me to the other point I was going to make, which was I was talking on Instagram about starting books and how much I hate it and how, you know, a kind of classic phrase that you use as a bit of a filler when you're doing a haul video is I'm really excited, can't wait to start. You, you often say that about pretty much every single book <laughs> that you put on here and actually it's not 100% true because when it actually comes to starting a new book I find it enormously difficult to get into, I find it really difficult to choose unless I've been out that day and bought a book, brought it home and I've had this miraculous thing where I don't have anything to read so I can pick it up straight away. I, I can't, I find it really hard to select a book and then to actually begin the act of reading it's, it, it really is horrible and I don't enjoy it so I'll often take a picture of a new read and then it'll actually be a couple more days before I actually officially start it and when I put that up there loads of you agreed so I'd love to hear I know not all of you are on Instagram so I'd love to hear what you think in the comments um, about beginning a new book are you always excited do you think it's easier if you don't have any kind of backlist who are you people if you don't have any kind of backlist? Even where library halls come on, there must be loads of stuff there. Um, yeah, so that's sort of an aside, but I, I have had a really good month. I've gone fiction, non-fiction, fiction, non-fiction. Non -fiction. I've had a few standout reads, real mind-blowing, off the charts, everybody should read this, you know, kind of reads. And I almost hope I don't have too many more because I'm not gonna have enough room at the end of the year to talk about them in my best ofs. So I've selected them, I've put them aside and I'll be doing videos on those this week. Um, these books that I've got beside me are by no means the losers. They're just very close runners up. Some of them are just pure, purely brilliant, but they just, they haven't tipped me over the edge. Um, they'll probably still be in books of the year. A lot of them are fiction. In fact, the three that I've chosen to talk about are non-fiction, the ones that I've talked about separately. So I don't know, I'm still in that non-fiction-y zone. A um, couple of them weren't as great, but anyway, we'll get to those. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with a really strong one. This is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowan Horse. I don't know if you can see that in this light. Isn't that better? Um, this is amazing. I've never read any Rebecca Rowan Horse before, but I'm excited to read more. And this is the first in a trilogy. Uh, it's set in pre-Columbian Americas, but it's kind of um, it, it's kind of fantasy combined with historical stuff. So Rebecca Rowan Horse says quite she got quite a detailed um, bit at the back where she says all the books that she researched in order to get some of the historical stuff accurate, um, and then she also talks about the fact that she. She kind of went with her gut and made this fantasy world because when she reads fantasy, it's nearly always set in a, like a European context, which is, you know, I don't read a lot of fantasy, but I can totally imagine that to be the case. So this is just really refreshing because it's a pre-Columbian world. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, there's no white people. There's no invasion. It's not focused around this sort of suffering based on a racial element of a group of people. It's about a complex society that has these amazing characters. It, you know, it is very fantasy driven in the sense of there's lots of plot. So you know that I'm not necessarily good with plot um, and I prefer character stuff. But this kind of delivered on both for me. I was just completely obsessed with it. The, I read it almost two months ago now and the memory of it is really clear in my mind which is always a good sign because I think sometimes you can enjoy a book and then it's just kind of forgettable but this is not and I am this is one of the very rare times I don't know if it's ever happened before where I've read the start of a series and, I've, and I'm going to have to now wait <laughs> for the others to come out so I've never had to do that um, I don't think I don't think I ever really read series at all for that to happen and if I do I come to it really late to the party so I am desperate for her to write the others, but this is so, so new. I've got a long time to wait. 
really really good if you've got it on your shelves read it then the next one is mrs death mrs death by selena godden i think she's saying godden but i think it's godden i know i don't know something about it that makes me want to say godden anyway um amazing cover as you can see you've got like a wolf and a hair um it's got hugely strong reviews on the back uh you've got um benjamin zephaniah uh, Maggie G, Idris Elba. It's a really, it's a really exciting book, and I very much enjoyed it. It's like a, I'd say it was a four star for me, um, and in places it's a five, and in places it's a three, which I think is always better than if it was just sort of tailing along, you know, on a four. The first part, everybody on Instagram that you've probably seen review this has said the same thing. The first sort of hundred pages is a five star read. And then it does kind of lose its way. And I, I don't want that to put anyone off reading it because it loses its way in an, in an exciting way. Um, Selena God Godden is, I'm just gonna say the author now because I'm just mispronouncing her name all the time. Um, she's a poet by trade and this is her first novel. And you can feel this sense of urgency, this sense of like creative, um, I don't know, these explosions of creativity and ideas that maybe an editor, and this is kind of how I feel about it, maybe an editor in the middle could have reined in a little bit more or, or set on a different direction. But the writing is so exciting that even when it's not necessarily going um, as well as it did before, the ideas are still really interesting and it gets you thinking. And the last section where it's poetry is just perfect. Um, it just totally redeems the book. Um, if there was anything in it that you that you were sort of, oh, you know, that's not quite gone where I expected, um, the end is just brilliant. So I think, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't think it's a book you should miss out on. I think it's a book you should read. I think it'd be an excellent book club book because there's so much to talk about. It's not something, again, it's one of those ones that's not forgettable, you know, and I, and I actually be tempted to read it again. So despite the fact that it didn't quite work in places, I think in some ways the fact that she's come from being a poet, I mean she's an established poet, she's not a novice writer, but she's come from being a poet and then she's written this novel, there's something in it that's kind of ballsy, she's not, a scared, she's not scared to sort of defy convention and she's not scared to just chuck out all of these ideas and try different things, there's loads of different things going on in it, but you know you can't always read a perfect book and you can't expect a writer to write a perfect book and sometimes the perfect books are the ones you genuinely couldn't tell somebody what it was about a few months later so i don't feel like that that, that about this book i think it's definitely worth a read i was a lot of jabber a lot i could have said that a lot quicker um this is they can't kill us all so i read this about a month ago the story of black lives matter by wesley lowry it's got a slightly different subtitle in the us which i can't remember what it is now it is not really the story of Black Lives Matter, I think is, is, is generally what I got from it. It's the story of, of, it's a story of journalism, it's a story of black journalism, it's a story covering um, the murder of primarily black men um, in America and how it is to be a black reporter in that arena. It is a story of how those groups came together from his perspective but he is like a bird's eye view. This is not like an, a story that charts the progress of Black Lives Matter, which which again, if I maybe, maybe if I'd read the back, I bought this because I bought this ages and ages and ages ago and I wanted something about Black Lives Matter, but I've, I've now found a couple of other books that I think will do it in the way I wanted it done. That said, it's not a bad book. It's a, it's a really interesting book. It's so interesting about journalism, um, interesting about how uh groups are formed now you know the in use of the internet tweeting um yeah i mean this is a pre-pandemic book as well so it goes there's another book the one that i've put aside is a protest and pandemic book and that just for me it took it to another level so it's it's still a really good book but i don't necessarily and, and actually it's a really good book if you don't know about all of the people and the protests that led up to george floyd you know if you just sort of george floyd was the first you'd really heard and you hadn't necessarily heard of trayvon martin or such like then this is a good book to take you through the appalling history 
of what's gone in America on in America. Um, okay, so the next book I'm going to read, I'm going to read, I'm going to talk about is Hadriana hey in All My Dreams by Rene de Pestre. That's my guess. Um, this is set in Haiti. Oh, I've got hair. When you have curly hair, you literally lose it all the time, and it's everywhere. There's nothing you can do about it. I do apologise. Um, so this is a book by Jacaranda Books, I believe they're called, and I got loads of Jacaranda Books direct from the publisher, yeah, uh, last year, and I really need to get into them. So this was the one I chose because it was the teeniest, and it's set in about 1938, but it was written, I think, in the 70s, and it, it's a kind of... I, don't, I hate using the word magical realism, and I don't think it is magical realism, but it's sort of of that bent. It's definitely fan... Well, hmm... I don't know. I don't know enough. I haven't got enough experience reading Caribbean literature to be able to say exactly what it is. Um, but it it reminds me of magical realism. It's about a young bride who dies at the altar just as she said yes. She's beautiful. She's enticing. Everybody loves her. She's like sort of this representation of female beauty. And she dies, but she doesn't really die. She becomes a zombie and you follow her, um, the, the boy who loves her, and then you also follow her narrative. Now, what I will say, I really actually could do with doing a whole review on this because it's really complex. About halfway through, I did think about DNFing, and I'm so glad I didn't because he goes into, the author goes into zombification and slavery in this kind of essay in the middle and it just blows your mind this idea of being in control of another being and taking away all their hopes and dreams which i just like just ha i just didn't even see that at all that was not something that i thought of when i was reading the first half as soon as i read that it changed my whole perspective yes you do have to overlook some things it does actually say in the introduction by um um edwidge danticat that is probably badly pronounced as well. That you have to, it says somewhere here, you have to not be offended. You have to, <laughs> and there are some bits in there. They, you know, the female body is just sexualized to the point of no return. Um, you know, there's a moth that deflowers young virgins. I mean, need, need I say more? But when you actually get into it, and then you, you spot the fact that there are these uh, metaphors going on for all sorts of things, I just, yeah, it's fascinating. Another book club book, and I would really, really recommend it. The Sellout, Paul Beatty. Not really for me. I started this with Ariel from She Wants the Diction, and she DNF'd it. She got fed up with it. I was getting fed up with it, but because I was halfway through and I was having a good reading month, I thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see it through. And it, it is, it's a, you know, it's a satire. You know, it's deliberately chock full of racism to kind of draw attention to the fact that it's, you know, America is hugely racist and actually some of this would be very applicable to the UK. So in that respect, it has to be uncomfortable reading. And actually, we, me and Ariel had a brief discussion about how I felt deeply uncomfortable about laughing at the jokes because as a white person, it was oh, it was it was difficult. Um, it's meant to be, which is why I carried on. Um, but Ariel, I think I don't want to put words into her mouth, but you know it, there was a lot of stuff going on there that was just deeply unpleasant. And I think you know being a black person today, um, especially if you're on social media, you're just bombarded with all these horrendous images of things that are happening to black people everywhere. And maybe you don't want to read about that as well, even if there is an end goal. So I would definitely put that as a warning, um, a bit of a trigger warning there, because it is like, you know, this is about somebody, re a black man reintroducing slavery in his hometown in order to regenerate it. I mean, I know, that in itself. But it is really incredible, and the guy is smart, you know. It's a big, massive show-off book in the best way. And the end makes, you know, it makes it make sense. But it just wasn't quite for me. I'm not particularly good with anything satire, if I'm completely honest. Okay, Freshwater by Aquakia Mezzi. Again, not massively for me. Um... <laughs> This is another book that is like a book, this is definitely a booktube darling and it's won awards and it should and it, you know, it's a great book and I'm excited to read more of, of their stuff. Um, but 
I think the first half was again it was mm, am I going to DNF this maybe I think primarily because of the setting you know it was a young person who was going to college um there was loads of loads of sex there's that actually there's loads of trigger warnings I mean basically anything you can think there might be a trigger warning for especially when it involves sexual violence this book is maybe not for you uh the second half I found much better and by the end of it I was glad I'd read it and found it really really interesting and a Quaker Mezzi is obviously hugely talented <laughs> and I wouldn't have given it any I wouldn't I wouldn't have reviewed it in a negative way at all if they hadn't been so successful like my tiny voice in there doesn't really matter I think it, the only reason I'm saying that it wasn't quite for me is just to console you if you didn't quite get out of it what you expected I think it's a young person's book sometimes for me I'm just a little bit old and I think that's the only thing that stopped me from enjoying it as much as I could have. Um, then I've got That Reminds Me by Derek Owusu. So this is the um, first book that was published under Murky Books by Stormzy, um, who is a British musician. And it's again, this has got amazing reviews. Benjamin Zephaniah, um, Dorothy Coombson, um, Ursa Daly Ward. And this is about... A, it follows the life of a young boy to adulthood and he has borderline personality disorder he's gone through the adoption system or fostering system it's it's told in a kind of prose poetry type thing like the segments are really really short so they're like a page and then you'll be on something else another page another page and they're all numbered and then there's sections so it's a very quick read I would say if you're going to read it and you haven't got a clue what is going on, you just have to go with it. There is loads of of vernacular in there that I just didn't understand, loads of slang that I didn't understand. And also, it's a really energetic book. You know, it's pacing along and giving you so much information. You've just, like, like a lot of poetry, you've just got to let it flow over you and let the words do their work. And by the end of it, you get this feel for it. And I really enjoyed it. I think it told a very powerful story. I found it heartbreaking. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's a really good collection, especially if you're a little bit afraid of poetry, but kind of want to delve in. This would be great because it does that sort of middle ground thing that is quite rare. And then this was the first book I read of the year, so I don't know why I'm reviewing it last, but this is Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith. Um, Tobley McSmith is, I, I believe, does he use male pronouns? Um, I, I don't know if he does use male pronouns, so I do apologise if, um, maybe I'll stick with they just to be sure. But um, this was amazing. This is just a really great YA book on a transgender boy who just wants to fall in love and in any other situation they would and maybe there'd be some teenage angst and some sort of you know you know the the woman of their dreams maybe wouldn't notice them and then it all comes right in the end but because of the fact that the main character is trans there's added complication and it's just makes I don't know there's something about that because it's a young adult book that makes it so so sad that people just can't accept other people for who they are and that this character has to go through what he goes through because of the fact that he's trans and for no other reason and I also love the fact that the main character I've forgotten I've forgotten his name now because it was so oh Pony of course it's Pony um I, I Pony had this voice which I really loved because He's a little bit nerdy and really shy, just started a new school. But when he's talking to the girl of his dreams, he is super cool and says all of the things that you kind of wished you'd been able to say in the moment. And I don't know whether that's sort of a bit of manifest manifesting from Toby McSmith, but it definitely felt like, oh, so glad you said that. That's so funny. And the girl, whose name I can't remember either, Georgia, she finds him really funny and they have this really cute friendship which kind of blossoms um yeah I just love it and I, I feel like ev everybody who is and oh, I can't even understand why anyone would be anti-trans but everyone who's anti-trans should read something like that and just why would you be it's just so anyway those are my books I think I've overrun by a lot so there'll be another couple of videos this week where I'll just be going in into some detail about the ones that I love love loved and uh, I hope you've all had a good reading couple of months and I'll try and do something in March a little bit more regularly. <laughs>
now that Idris is back in school, he went back last week, might stand a chance of doing that. Anyway, I hope you're all well and I'll see you soon. Bye.